Now I talk about supply shocks. And again, as before, I use the word shock not to describe something that happens completely unexpectedly, but something that shifts, in this case, the supply curve strongly enough such that we really can uh, see a certain change in the diagram that we use to analyze a market. The questions that we answer in this chapter are how we can analyze supply shocks in a standard model of the market for a normal good. Then what uh, are the positive and negative supply shocks? How can we distinguish them? And what are the effects of these shocks again on prices and on quantities? We start again by recalling our diagram that we used to analyze the market. First, we have the supply curve, which is an upward sloping curve in the space of the price level and the quantity supplied. So the firms supply more if the price is higher. Then we draw also the demand curve in the same space, the price and now quantity, but the demanded quantity here, if we draw the downward sloping demand curve, which implies that for a higher price, households demand fewer of the goods. And if the price is lower, they demand more of the goods. And where these two curves intersect, we have the market equilibrium, the equilibrium price at which supply is equal to demand. And we have the equilibrium quantity Q star. Now suppose that there is a free trade agreement signed, such that tariffs are eliminated, let's assume, for a particular market for cars. That means that more cars can be imported at a lower price because the tariff has been eliminated. And this constitutes basically a positive supply shock in the meaning of the word shock that I use here in this chapter. Now we ask how such a shock affects the market for cars. Well, such a positive supply shock would shift the supply curve to the right. So we can import more cars, so the quantity would actually increase. And if the price was to stay the same, we would see that there would be excess supply. Again, we know from the market equilibrium chapter that excess supply leads to a downward pressure on the price. And we move along the demand curve towards the new equilibrium, which is associated with a lower market clearing price and a higher quantity sold. So we can import more cars that increases the quantity and that leads to a downward pressure on the price level. So the price decreases and we have this new market equilibrium here. Now we can summarize again verbally what happens. The trade agreement is enacted. That means more cars can be imported, supply increases. This shifts the supply curve outwards because of the additional imports. If the price would stay the same of cars, then we would have excess supply of cars. That means that downward pressure on the market price um, builds up. The market price would decrease and we would move along the demand curve to the new equilibrium. This new equilibrium is then associated with a lower price and a higher market activity in terms of the quantity that is sold. Now, what happens in the opposite case, in case of a negative supply shock? Here, the typical example that is brought in textbooks is uh, an oil price shock. For example, like the one that um, the world faced in the 1970s due to OPEX policies to increase the price and reduce the quantity of uh, oil that they export. So that means that the supply of oil is reduced at the global level. And that implies a shift of the supply curve of oil to the left, so a reduction in supply. And now we ask how this affects the market for petrol in the United States or the European Union. So what we would have is a negative supply shock. The supply curve shifts to the left. That means fewer oil is on the market, which implies that there is excess demand. So more people demand oil in terms of petrol and so on, uh, then um, the uh, oil producers are willing to supply at the given price. And that means that upward pressure on the price level occurs. And we would move then along the demand curve again upwards to the new market equilibrium with a higher price and the lower quantity uh, that is sold in equilibrium. Again, we can summarize everything verbally. So we have that there is a reduction in the supply of oil due to the policies that the OPEC cartel 
connect, that shifts the supply curve inwards. At the old market price, we would have excess demand. Households would demand uh, more oil via the petrol demand that they have and uh, the demand for heating um, and so on and so forth. Uh, then uh, there would be supply on the market. So there would be excess demand. And this excess demand leads to an upward pressure on the price of oil. That means we move along the old demand curve to the new equilibrium, and this new equilibrium is associated with a higher price level and the lower market activity in terms of the quantity that is sold. And that's what we've seen during the oil price crisis in the 1970s. Now, in case of the demand shocks, we've seen that they can have economy-wide repercussions. I mean, demand shocks are economy-wide phenomena, so if the incomes of households decrease, it's easy to see that this has economy-wide repercussions and affects many markets. But here, where we have a supply shock in one market, for example, in this energy market, it could also be that this has economy-wide repercussions because of spillover effects to other markets. For example, if the price of oil increases and therefore the price of um, heating and goes up and, and the price of uh, petrol for cars and lorries that transport all the goods in an economy, um, then it's easy to see that there is generally an upward pressure in prices and also a reduction in the real income of households because they have to spend more on petrol, they have to spend more on uh, fuel for heating, and that leads to a reduction in the real income that they have available to spend on other goods. And that means that uh, such an effect that appears in one market can easily spill over to other markets and therefore we can observe uh, an economy-wide recession uh, and an economy-wide upward pressure on prices in case of such a negative energy supply shock as we've considered it here.